Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, all, and, and uh, thank you for joining uh, today Weba session, where we're going to be talking about how to successfully solve million-dollar energy project in in, in Africa. So uh, it's my great pleasure today to be doing this with uh, my uh, colleague and business partner, Alexan uh, Guillermo, and who is everybody of, uh, D, of Deep Blue. <clears throat> so uh, before we kick off, so let me first of all remind you of the uh, house, house rules, just to make sure that we have a conversation that uh, goes smoothly. So as I mentioned, I have purposely turned off your camera. So there's only going to be Alexander and myself so speaking. So hopefully that's fine with you. And then, uh, you're going to have the chance to ask question at the, uh, at the end. So using the chat command, we will address the questions. If you have some further feedback, feel free to send that to us at uh, source at renewablesinafrica.com. And last but not the least, uh, I will ask you obviously to uh, make sure you enjoy uh, yourself and, and, uh, and learn a few things along the way. So before I carry on, so and before I, I talk about the agenda, let me first of all remind everybody what is the Weba concept and uh, what this specific uh, session is all about. Weba is a forum that Renewables in Africa we created to discuss about the challenges that the African continent faces in two industries, specifically renewables energy and, uh, and, and, and technology. And we want to look at that against the, uh, the backdrop of uh, geopolitical events that are happening. So this is a space for us to have a conversation to discuss, to do some presentation and to learn a few things. So uh, uh, be very welcome. So today's conversation, it's quite special and, and interesting because we want to be talking about the latest uh, strategic partnership that we have made with uh, Deep Blue to, uh, to talk about the uh, private deal opportunity that uh, we've developed uh, together. And uh, in general, giving some perspective, some insight as to how do we actually solve interesting projects in Africa that worth million, because there is a way to go about it. So that's what we're going to be discussing. I'll be covering the, uh, the, the topic more from the private deal side, so that I, that's where I have uh, a lot more interest, a lot more uh, insight, I would say. And then my uh, colleague, Alexander, will look at the uh, tender, uh, tender side. So Alexander, you want to say one or two things about that before we, we kick up the conversation? Uh, yes, hello everybody. So very happy to have entered into partnership with Tony. And um, so Deep Blue, uh, so I'm the CEO of Deep Blue. I've, I used to work 14 years in the energy sector. And uh, in my past life, I was in charge of, uh, I was a director of business development for Africa and Europe for a large corporate. So, and naturally, that's why it brings to me to collaborate with Tony to try to, to, to see how we can uh, source and propose tenders and private deal opportunities to people who are willing to enter into the African market. So thanks again for being here. And uh, so Tony, you can proceed with your private deals and I will be more than happy to present the tender side just after that. Excellent, excellent. Thank you very much for that. So uh, I have, uh, you, you can see the, the agenda. First of all, you can all see my screen, right? So Alex, and you can see my screen, correct? Yes, I can. Excellent. That's what I wanted to check first. So uh, the agenda, it's uh, hopefully quite uh, straightforward. So have a brief introduction of what Renewables in Africa is for people that are still not aware of who we are, looking at Africa as a land of opportunities for clean energy. So looking at what, is, what used to be the model to source projects as far as we are concerned, and then looking at the new approach and the headaches that the developer investors usually go through when they uh, tap into the African market. And we're going to suggest to you what is the, uh, we believe, the right way to approach the market and what does that mean in terms of the cost and uh, our, our, the cost implications. And after that, we're just going to wrap it up. And after the, that conclusion, we're going to move into Alexan's site where we're going to be looking at uh, the Deep Blue platform and then, uh, how 
you can uh, you can actually source a very interesting tenders over there. So let me just uh, uh, move on then. So what is renewables in Africa? So it's a two-in-one company. Usually, I would say that it's a clean energy engineering consultancy. So we provide three type of services: direct investment opportunities that uh, suitable for people that are around uh, uh, that are connected today. I have to say, we had a, a lot of interest shown for the uh, for the webinar. So people from the develop uh, from the um, energy uh, development side, some financiers, a few policymakers, and a lot of consultants. So um, uh, uh, renewables in Africa provide direct uh, investment uh, opportunity. That's through our matchmaking services, and we partnering with uh, Deep Blue on that. We also provide uh, insights and intelligence that for investors that are interested into the market, but don't necessarily have the correct knowledge because they might be knowledgeable about all the side of the industry in other places, but not necessarily in Africa. And last but not the least, some technical advice and financial advice to project developers. You can go all the way from feasibility to study early development work to helping those, uh, or those promoters to raise the capital they need to develop their project. So that's what we do. Most of, us, most of you will probably be aware as well that we are also a media platform promoting the, uh, the, uh, the clean energy across the continent. We, we say usually uh, the catchphrase for that spreading the, the, the green gospel, very important for us. Now, as we're talking about Africa, so I'm sure all of you have heard uh, and read all those great lines about uh, uh, what, what's happening in, across the continent with regard to, the, uh, 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 to clean energy. You can see, for example, here, headline talking about uh, Zambia opening the first uh, solar plant. And I've actually learned this morning that uh, the plan is actually live as of today, if I'm correct. Ethiopia that has launched a big scaling solar uh, tender. And by the way, you can uh, uh, approach uh, Deep Blue and Renewables in Africa if you need some better understanding and support there. And many other, uh, uh, many other headlines. So I'm not going to talk about all of them. All I've, all I've just listed into this slide, it's some of them. And you've seen that, right? So I'm not just... I'm not teaching you anything new here. So clearly there is an opportunity, and, but the sector is actually only just scratching the surface. There's a lot more that could be tapped into, and that's sort of uh, what we're looking to demonstrate here. So how do you source uh, uh, this project? So there used to be, I would say, an old approach. So what, what was that? So you will have investors that will want to tap into, when I say investors, it could be also technical partners, they want to tap into the continent. So they used to connect with, I would say, two or three key individuals that uh, they knew on the continent or they knew where connecting the continent and asking them whether these guys can connect them to the right opportunity, right? So solar, wind, that's what I've represented here. But in fact, I want to represent the full renewable energy uh, spectrum here. And for, that, uh, and for these people that were getting in touch, their key uh, understanding was that these people uh, uh, were uh, uh, connected to the highest levels. So usually people used to say, yeah, I only want people that can uh, get, get me to speak directly into the, into the presidency. Yeah, so that uh, I know that I will, be, uh, 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 I, I will be well received and my project has a, a great channel of success. There's certain level of truth into that, but it's not all. It's actually far from, uh, uh, far from only that, right? And also, don't, don't forget, okay, you might be linked to a president, to a minister, whatever, but what if you change? It actually changes, actually, uh, more than we, we actually think in, that in many countries in Africa, especially the one where people are interested in going. So there's quite a few problems with this approach, right? So first of all, you want to know, am I talking to the right person? Because people will sometimes tell you that they have connection where they don't, right? So they might not be the right person, but they can sense that you bring in business. Obviously, they're going to position themselves from the go-to guy, right? So you want to make sure, do they have the right relationship, right? So everybody will say, I know a guy here and there. Yes, but we, know, we all know somebody. But is that somebody is the person that will be relevant for what the investor is looking for here? It's, it's something that I will personally question. And also, uh, last but not the least, do... Uh, do these people have the right understanding about the industry? You might know, you might have some right connection, but if you don't understand how the industry works, you definitely get the wrong, uh, the wrong end of a stick. So very important for me to, uh, to make sure that uh, you understand that. 
obviously, um, again, I'm not teaching anything new here. This is something uh, those of you who are developer promoters, you've gone through that, and I'm sure you've learned your, your, your lesson. And there is a new approach that seems to be, there's a lot more structure, whereby we have dedicated business managers, right? So for Africa, for Europe, for different, uh, a, a different region, and they will be quite thorough and diligent in going to their job, right? So they will be making sure that they do the market researches, they develop their strategy right, and they establish a uh, priority list as to the country they want to go into, the region, the technology, the size of a project. Those are just few, uh, a few ideas of, um, of the criteria they will be looking at before uh, uh, tapping into uh, uh, the market. And I would say that's definitely the right, thing, uh, the right thing to do. But then the question is, how do you still find that million dollar project, right? So you may have developed the best strategy ever, but at the end of the day, if you still can't identify those projects where you're gonna apply this, well, I would argue that uh, it was a great job, but not enough, definitely not. So, and that's what we're gonna try and tap into here. And especially when you are a developer and uh, an investor, there are many questions that will usually come to your mind, right? So you wanna find out, for example, you heard about tenders and you're wondering, is it the only way you can actually tap into great opportunities? It's certainly, there's certainly uh, uh, one way. Even if for the tender, you still need to be uh, quite smart in how you're approaching that. And Alex and will actually cover this side. But you also know that you have private deal. But the question is, where are they? Because usually they're not publicized. You need to find out where, or, 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 where, you, where you can find them. And then you need to know how am I going to be certain that you know, those projects are actually worthy? So how, how am I going to vet them? It's a bit difficult to vet them if you don't have the right people in place you know, in the country or, or that know the, the, the region. So there, uh, uh, there it goes. So where can I identify the reliable partners that I would need and make sure that they have the relationship, right? That is important. That's still important. I never say it's not important. I'm just saying that, first of all, you start having the right person, having the right relationship, and an understanding of how the industry is working and how the industry is evolving and how much it's going to cost me. You need to have an understanding of that. It's quite crucial, important. So we believe a way to de-risk the strategy is what we're going to be suggesting uh, here for you. You clearly want to be talking to the right person, the right company. How do you know it's the right person, the right company? You, you want to make sure that he has some industry, he or she has industry sector experience. That's important to understand what they're talking about. Have a market exposure because you might be well versed in the, let's say the Spanish market, the German market, the Mexican market, may know nothing about Africa, right? So you want to make sure that that person has that knowledge. If you don't, Africa, trust me, it's a very special place, right? So you might actually go through very, very hard, a lot of hardship if you don't make sure that you know your market properly. So you want to have also the, uh, a solid relationship I insist in here at various level, because if in, even if you go, even if you get the authorization uh, from the presidency, you still need to you still need to have those tasks implemented. And if you don't have the relationship at the different level, your your project can still be slowed down significantly. And don't forget, right? So usually it's a little bit like everywhere. So the ministry, all these guys, those are the politicians. They come and go, but usually people that will stay are the civil servant. Meaning that if you have a solid relationship there, that's how you actually make your project move. So that's very important. Obviously, selecting the right, uh, the right project. There's a number of things that you need to be looking at. If there is legal structure in place, if you have as well uh, the, 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 the project team that will talk about that. So how advanced are they in the development work? Have they secured the land? Have they done some permitting? Have licenses in place? So you want the project to be as close as possible to shovel ready, but not necessarily shovel ready. That's another thing I will also say, because I have a lot of people come to me and say, we want, we want shovel ready, shovel ready. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> if you have a shovel ready project, you can be almost certain that these guys are actually not searching for investors because people are already jumping at them, right? In fact, what I would advise, if you want to have a head start, you want to pick up a project a little bit early, right? So that you can take that to shovel ready and just carry on. Otherwise, you're all going to go for the same project, and guess what? It's going to be quite difficult to, uh, to have it, and you're also going to have uh, to, uh, to pay that project uh, 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 quite expensively. So that's our advice. Obviously, you're free to do what you want, but that's what we re recommend. And the right project also will have the right financial in place. So at the end of the day, it's still a business, and you need to make sure that it makes sense. You need to have the right processes, right? And that's what Alexander will be talking about 
Even if you go for the tender, so you need to know how to screen those opportunities because there are, are loads, there are loads, and Alison will tell you that. There are millions of tenders, no, not millions, but there are, there are hundreds of tenders, right, in different, uh, different sites. It could be transmission and distribution. It could be um, uh, energy generation. There are, are loads. But you need to know how can I screen them very quickly and go to the one that really match my, uh, my criteria. You need to have a methodology to qualify them properly. That's quite important. And you want to make sure that you have a dual facilitation approach. And that's what we're saying. If you don't have the key people in place, the person, and the relationship, trust me, it is difficult. It is almost difficult. It, 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 it's, it's very difficult. So, and I'm sure those of you on the, on the phone have gone through that can definitely attest to that. And it means as well for me, you need to have a budget. This is also something I see and uh, it basically breaks my heart. Because people, when they come to Africa, for whatever reason, sometimes they forget that there's all, uh, there is no reason why they would be diligent for other geographies and not be so in Africa. You're not going to source the project just by connecting by some guy who knows some minister. No, there needs to be a proper approach and it needs to be a budget in place. In fact, if you know actual, this is a platform that's for, uh, for deal sourcing. They've actually estimated that you can spend uh, uh, between half a million to a million to actually, uh, for, for actual deal sourcing. And that's to get something like a, 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 a five to 10 deal per, a, per year. And from the five to 10 deal, not all will be successful. But still, that's the, that's the game you need to play. And what I've represented here for you, you also will represent that. Imagine if you wanted to source, for example, a project, let's say in Guinea, right? So you need to make sure that you've done your market research. You need to fly down there. You need to get accommodation. And you probably will have, at, at the bare minimum, in your company, a business manager working on that that is supported by a technical, by, by a technical guy and probably some other expenses. And when you look at the old, the, the old cost of that, for a month, you talked about a uh, 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 30 grand, roughly. And what I'm saying here is, for you to get to know the place and to have a little bit of a sense of what's going on, remember, people you can connect to will have years of experience. But for you, if you just want to learn and do it by yourself, for example, you would take at least six months. That's what I was three to six months, right? I represent a six month here. You can see how much the cost is, right? So don't sort of uh, um, a mistake yourself in thinking that it would be it would be actually a quick win. So if you go for the quick win, yeah. And even in taking those six months, you still don't have, uh, you still not guarantee that you're absolutely going to get a, a project. Because like I said, it takes some time to get to know, to get to know a market. So this is what we have been saying. Obviously, the solution is collecting with people like obviously renewables in Africa. We, we preach it for ourselves here. But there's also other people, so we, we, we're not denying that. And as far as we are concerned, when we're working with a client, what we have in place is a, is a premium package. We also have a standard package. You can see the feature there where, obviously, when we, get, we will uh, select project uh, beforehand for you that will be screened and qualified, bring that to your attention. And once you bring, we, we, we bring that to, that, to, to our attention, the features de uh, uh, um, describe how we take it forward with you, and obviously what is the um, the uh, the, uh, uh, the payment uh, the, uh, the the price structure that is uh, associated associated with that. So that gives you a rough idea, a rough idea of uh, of uh, of how we we well, we take it forward. So. We believe that this, app, this, this approach is cost effective because like I say, so we would know the market and uh, we will make sure that uh, it's far less than what that budget for the six months will, uh, uh, or will take you to. And uh, less hassle, I'm not saying hassle free, I'm just saying less hassle, much less, because uh, of having the right relationship in place and the right people in, play, uh, in place, we can make it quicker, certainly quicker than what you would have done. And, giving you a higher confidence of success and also because of that knowledge of the, of the market and the right network uh, in, in place. So uh, in conclusion, all I would say is actually is Africa definitely is a land of opportunity and the right approach is mandatory. To access the, uh, the project, you need to know your industry and your market. So having the right partner and, and the right relationship is critical, essential, as we can say, and be prepared to have a budget that you will use to deploy into Africa and make sure that you spend it well. So that's what I had to say. That's just a slight talk about the tracker that we released a few months ago. You can get uh, a copy, uh, purchase that from that link. And um, these are my, uh, my details. And I will now pass down to um, my uh, colleague, Alexan, who will be talking to you about the, uh, 
the uh, the the um uh the, the public tender and present you the uh, the G Blue platform. So Alex, are you ready to uh, to take the ball? Yes, I am ready. Let me just stop. Uh, if I if I first of all, so my camera stop sharing. Thanks, Tony. I will share my screen now. Okay. Can you see the screen? I can see your screen. Okay, so uh, I guess everybody can see the screen as well. <coughs> so, <clears throat> as I used to work like a, a lot of years in the as a business development or sales manager, I know how hard it's, it is to find the right opportunities because we have to go through um, thousands of different organizations and make sure we grab the right opportunities. So uh, that's one of the objective of Deep Blue. It was in the single place to be able to federate a network of professionals. So we've got a lot of decision makers, CEOs, sales managers, sales director, business development director in one single place. Um, and uh, all these people are here because they are trying to find opportunities. So that's why we have been working in the last month to try to propose a feature which enable people to have in one single spot all the energy related tenders. Uh, before I go straight to the demo, I just want to talk about the methodology because um, what is difficult is you've got uh, like around, we are scanning every day around 5,000 organizations which are pure energy um, organizations. So mainly in renewable, transmission, distributions, generation, but as well uh, some of them in a more LV sector. But then that will give you, uh, uh, it's difficult to say a number, but maybe 300 or 400 new tenders every day. But then a lot of other opportunities are coming from other sectors, like for example, uh, in agriculture, in uh, automotive industry, uh, in aluminum industry. Uh, a lot of industry would like to have a power transformer at the end of the factory or because they are uh, doing an electro intensive um, industry. So we need to capture that. And to do that, what we have done, um, and I'm just making an example here. Uh, so um, I will show you the, the small video, but. Uh, <laughs> So what, what we do is we collect, so we've got robots, so it's pure IT and mixed with an algorithm. Uh, we, every day, we'll scan all tenders coming from around 5,000 organizations. We've got 3,000 public organization and around 2,000 private organization. And our key challenge for the coming months is to multiply the number of private organizations who are scanning all based in energy sector. And after what we do, we have defined, uh, I'm going to the methodology for you to understand. We have defined what I would say keywords or key expressions. And what we believe is that if an industry like uh, in agriculture or in automotive, in their tender, a part of the scope of work is linked to energy storage or an accumulator or batteries or supercharger. This tender, even if it's not a hundred percent energy tenders, does include a scope of work for people who are want who are willing to sell batteries, are willing to sell energy devices. Same for cable. So we are what we are creating is an algorithm we will pick up all the tenders which include in the scope of work some keywords. That's the second thing we do, and that enable us to bring roughly from 300 to 400 tenders per day to 1,000 tender per, tender per day, because it means that we are able to capture a large part of the hidden activity or hidden opportunities on the market. After what we do is, once we have done that, um, we use synonymous that sounds trivial 
But when someone wants to look for an off-grid opportunity, he's not looking only for off-grid, but he's looking as well for rural electrification, microgrid, mini-grid, and the system needs to understand that. When I'm looking for batteries, I, won't do, I would like as well maybe to find the opportunities which are not purely batteries, but other energy storage solutions. When I'm looking for HV lines, I'm looking maybe for HV cable, poles, or MV lines. So all these are work, so there is a lot of expertise behind that to make sure that um, the people who are looking opportunities will get what not they have typed, but what they were what, what, what they intend to find, so which is quite different. Um, and after, like uh, any other algorithm, we sort the queries by relevance. So basically, if I go here, um, I will have, so today we've got 15,000 opportunities, business opportunities. Um, so per region, it goes per main categories, it goes for, per expiry date as well. And uh, you can as well by publishing time. So if you want to see all the new opportunities we was published this week, you will find 6,000. So it's roughly 1,000 per day. Huh? It's what's uh, 1,000 new opportunity per day. Um, and I can even as well decide to see expire tenders. In that case, I will have a lot more um, just one second, excuse me. I will uh... So for example, if I go and uh, I am, uh, did I make a choice? Yes, I understand. Okay, um, I'm gonna choose everything, show the expired tender. So I've got around 40,000 business opportunities in energy sectors, which has been released since January, February 2019, because we have started to capture all this in Feb to make it available to the people um, a few weeks back. Um, so if I type, um, so basically the way it works is uh, you've got uh, tenders which are in green. Uh, so if I go solar, then it will give you all the business opportunities which have a scope of work in the solar. So first it will look at the title, then it will look at the description, then it will look at the name of the buyer. That's the way it works. And it will bring the relevance depending of the date of publication, the date of the expiry date, and the number of match between what you have typed and actually what he has found. Um, red means that's expired. Orange means be careful, there is only one week to answer to this. And green is you have more than one week, still some time to bid to this. Um, a lot of people say that when a tender is out, it's already too late. I've been, uh, I've been working in this field for, for a while. That's true for a high voltage uh, tenders mainly in transmission. When you've been on a 400 kV or 500 kV turnkey substation, yes, you do have a vendor list, and um, and but that represents a tiny part of the business opportunity. The main part of the opportunity, with the, which are in low, in medium voltage, low voltage, or in high voltage, but not 500 kV, maybe 220 kV, the competition is still open and there is some time to participate to that. Um, if I go to Africa, which is our subject of today, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do solar again. I will see that I've got right now 47 um, live, opportunities so they are live there is no expiry because i've just untick the, the box uh for this um so i don't know if i take uh, this one um it's a uh, egypt solar auction it's just for a consultant um and then if you click here you go straight to the source of the rfq so as 
as we, when we can, there is still a link to the original source. So you can have a, it's not only a description, you just click and then you go straight to the right tender. Um, let's do, uh, I don't know, microgrid, I think there is not a lot, mini grid. Uh, there is, is uh, I don't know, um, just example for the rural electrification agency in Nigeria. Um, just click here on the link, which is, was not fulfilled. And well, basically what you have here is all, um, Tony, any, any search you want me to do? Uh, if I just go on switch gear, I will find all the switch yard, substation, switch gear, but the, because the system understand that he, I'm actually looking for that. Um, that's one of the parts. So basically it's tender sourcing. Every time you will have access to the country, the name, the title, and the link, the link to the right tender. And a second way is what we have done with Tony from Renewable in Africa. We do have groups inside these groups. We have created a private deals groups where we propose to people interested to go and have access to a presentation of deals. That will give you the key insights. So not entering into all the details, but you will have a feel of the project. And that's enable people, if they are interested, to see uh, how is the maturity of the project, what is the, the required investment to be done, uh, in which region is that? Uh, is that uh, a PPA already negotiating and what's the price of the kilowatt um, And so on and so on. And uh, we do propose people to join this group. Uh, for the moment, it's free because we're gonna increase this portfolio and step by step, we're gonna do, a, we're gonna propose a membership to, to join this group. And that will give you uh, in, a, in one glance, all the private deals you have, we do have in the portfolio. And that was a good transition to come back to you, Tony, I guess. Okay. Thanks for that, Alex. So, appreciate that. So, uh, if we stay on Deep Blue, uh, I guess we might want to stay on Deep Blue because um, uh, there might be some questions regarding the, uh, our, our, the platform. So, that, uh, that was the essence of um, what we had to, to, uh, to present today. So, I would say to, uh, uh, to be participants, so please do send your questions uh, through your, uh, to the Dropbox and uh, we, will, we will address that. So I'm just giving a couple of minutes. I think I have already a couple of questions that have turned up. Okay, uh, the first question, it's, it's for me. So let me just uh, display. So the question uh, I'm being asked is, whether whether the um, the uh, the uh, uh, the project that we having as a private deal are always uh, shovel ready, so let me uh, 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 address the question. And I think I mentioned that uh, very uh, briefly. So am I? No, I don't have a slide for the presentation that will show that. But the project, just go back to this. Uh, yeah, that's what I have. The project we are uh, we are dealing we are dealing with are not all uh, shovel ready. However, they are usually close enough to uh, 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 the shovel ready, meaning that there might be one or two steps that are needed before uh, we can we, we can uh, we can consider that done. Whether it could be the PPA that still need to be finalized, or it could be the uh, generation license that needs to be uh, 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 obtained, and so forth. Because don't don't forget that. Depending on what country you're going into, so the process it could be slightly, uh, slightly different. And also because I wanted to uh, specify and reiterate in here that um, it uh, uh, that if you're looking for great opportunity, it's good also to uh, to pick them up a little bit earlier than a uh, little, little bit earlier than than, than shovel ready. Because at shovel ready, you have all uh, all your competitors that are there. So if you're prepared to, uh, to take just a bit of risk, that means that you want to understand a little bit better the markets and uh, get to understand the environment 
and talking to the right people, we can help you with that. Then you can end up um, with something that's uh, a, a very interesting for, uh, for you. So that's what uh, that's what I would say. So we do have some that are ready to go. So in the opportunity that we have at the moment, we have one in the southern southern African country that's ready to, ready to go. Even if it's a uh, uh, is a gas one, so okay, we we. We offer that to our, 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 our to our client, even if 95% of our mandate is still within uh, our renewables. But the continent needs to electrify itself, so you can't uh, ignore the, uh, the the other sources. So that's um, yeah, what I I had to say. So hopefully that is giving uh, a good response to uh, to that. So um, okay, the second question that's for you, Alex. Is the person is asking? How is the platform working? So could you take that question for me, please? Uh, yes. Um, or do you want to... Uh, 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 but what does it mean, work? in which sense, working? Well, I guess, so uh, all it says is how the, uh, the platform working. I, I, I guess the question is um, um, when people signed up to the, uh, to the platform, uh, how do they get, uh, how could they use it to the, to the benefits to extract? Uh, because... What you've shown, we can see you create the experience, you know your, plat your platform inside out. But for new people, so how do they take advantage? Okay. And even have a, and I even, and I even have a, a subsequent question uh, for you. So why should they join? <laughs> okay. Um, can you I might, take it? Yes, yes. Uh, let, uh, let, me, let me just stop sharing and uh, you can take it again. Alex? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Can, you can see the screen, right? Yeah, I can. I don't know how to, <laughs> okay, maybe this. Okay, how the platform is working. So, um, people are invited to join. So we invite people to join at the very beginning, but once people have joined, uh, other people can invite others. So current members can invite just putting name, last name, mails and invitations and people will be requested to join the platform. Once they go there, they just arrive in the platform. They can even make the, the, the synchronization through LinkedIn, just to make sure that the headline and picture is uploading directly. And everybody has got a, a profile that is managing his own profile. So I'm not going to enter into all the details, but all these parameters, you can change the parameters. You can create a bit like in LinkedIn for this part. You can uh, uh, create your profile and you can, of course, decide the degree of visibility of your emails, phone number, and so on. So all this is compliant with the new rules of general data protections. Um, after the way it works on the live feed, uh, so platform is free to access to the live feed, to access to the company directory, to access to the network of people, to access to the job board, to access to the publications, to access to the events. That's free. But we do require a membership for accessing to the business function, which is a tenders and RFQ, because there is a lot of work involved in that. And that we do believe it brings a lot of value for companies. And when someone, uh, so we've got memberships, and uh, when people go for uh, one year, that go down to not even 50 euros per month for three users. So if a small company would like to give access to this three sales manager, that's what we have. And then people will be able, through the login and a password, uh, to enter into that just you know there is a logout and login um that's for the business part but as well there are many other possibilities if uh you want to promote let's let's say you are organizing um technical days in ivory coast or in uganda or you're organizing or you're launching a new product you can create an event uh, you can put the pictures, the video, make a release a promotion of what you want to show to the market, to the people. And then you can decide to target people. So we've got a, roughly 2,000 people on the platform, plus 2,000 non-active. So they do receive the communication, even if they are not fully active on the platform. And you say, I believe that 
this for any reason that will interest uh, all people working in control and protection industry. And then you can see this one is working, this one is working, this one. You can select the people. So you do really targeted marketing and these people will receive a communication saying, this person from such company has just launched a new product, has just organized a technical days, has just sent a new RFQ, and they believe that you would be interested by that. So it's quite powerful, and it's not like LinkedIn, if I may say, because here it's purely energy professional from high level. And so it means that it's between us, more or less. And um, I don't know if that answers to the question, but uh, basically you can create posts, trip, events, notify people, manage your profile, invite people, access to the jobs and access to the business functions, providing you are okay to go for membership. Okay, uh, uh, thanks for that, uh, Alison. I think I have two, uh, two questions, but you, you stay on deep look. There's another question uh, th that, that came up for you. So okay. the next question I had for me was, um, uh, why did I say that uh, you need about six months to develop uh, to develop a project? And okay, yeah, you're right. The uh, the table that I had was showing the figure how it looked like for six months uh, uh, for six months of uh, sourcing a project. So this is um, rule of thumb, right? So if you if you if you if you if you can think about that, so you come into a country that you barely know. So to get to know first of all the country, the people. Uh, obviously the culture and then the industry so it takes some time and you can't just do that by having some desktop uh, desktop studies especially if you're not been into the place uh, before so you need to do a certain level of or, or travel so definitely I actually think that Sigma is even quite uh, I think quite optimistic I would, I would rather say it can be a, a lot more longer than that so yeah and why you and why are you doing that for any normal company so you still have to uh, uh, to pay your charges, right? So you still have uh, uh, employee that you have. You have to say, I mentioned the business manager and a technical guy. That's for me the bare minimum. Most of the time, it will be more than that. And these people, you still need to you, know, you still need to pay for the uh, uh, for the salaries. And most of the time, their job will be about uh, sourcing and um, and then, uh, uh, analyzing projects that the company can potentially be uh, be, uh, be stepping on. So that's the reason we say six months because that's just from experience and, um, and that's what we, uh, we had. And another question that I had was uh, asking me whether uh, uh, I believe uh, private deals are better than, than, than tenders. That's, it's uh, not an easy answer to, uh, 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 to, put, uh, to put together. And also because it looks like the person want to put me against Alexander, which is not the case here. I would say it depends on the on the strategy that the, that the the company the company has. So if you're gonna go for a tender for me, as far as I'm concerned, you better make sure that you have a, a sufficient knowledge of the market. You definitely have a, a track record that will play for you uh, uh, that play for you, and you'll be able to uh, um you be to. I think uh, uh, Alex, I managed yeah, to take yeah, the hand uh, back. Yeah, so. I'm trying to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to okay. come back. Okay, I will stop like Yes, that. okay, no problem. So I can, I, I can release you, don't worry. <laughs> so yeah, so I can release you. So, um, and yes, I, uh, uh, I was saying, so I was talking about, let me just go back to the slide that I was talking about. Yeah, that's the one I had, yeah. So I've listed some costs there that, almost unavoidable. And uh, if you compile all the costs, so you see you have an idea what, what, what it takes you. So mm -hmm. whether, whether as, a, uh, as a company, you decide to uh, get the service of uh, people like uh, Renewables in Africa, uh, the Blue, whatever, or you decide to, uh, to do it by yourself, that's absolutely fine. But one thing is for uh, is certain, you will have costs, uh, you, uh, you will incur some costs. You cannot go around that, that, uh, that uh, that's a given. So I've just given you a, an idea there. So uh, for the tender, you need to, have, you need to be uh, well prepared. And if you are a solid company with all the right uh, function in place, yes, you can go and be knowing that you're gonna be going against people like yourself that are well, uh, um, uh, uh, well established in the, in the company. 
private deal would tend to be, I would say for me, more favorable for, uh, for smaller size uh, 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 company who are also uh, are very good in their, uh, in their processes. So they can engage directly with the customer and make sure that they can actually get projects that usually big, uh, 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 big companies uh, uh, will get. So private side would tend to have a little bit the, the upper hand, but at the same time, when you have a tool, like for example, Deep Blue, that you can use at your advantage. And one of the things that Alex and may have not mentioned that it's uh, there is a supporting uh, 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 service that comes with all, with all the standards that are displayed to you. Because as I said, if you want to apply for a tender, so you want to have the right knowledge in place and the knowledge of the market. So if you require some uh, assistance, either to select the right local partners, to get a market insight that goes with that and to help you to put together the application. This is something that obviously uh, with Deep Blue, we're more than happy to look, uh, to look at that with you and make sure that if you're gonna spend time and money in responding to a tender, you might as well do, uh, do that very well. So hopefully it's giving you a bit of an answer. I think Alison wants to uh, uh, tip into. Yes, <clears throat> I have two, two more comments if I may. The yeah. first one is a, a tender is almost, always fully funded. So financing is secured and they just go out for getting the right contractors and right manufacturer. So, and when private deals, uh, that happens a lot of times that they, are, they still need some funding. And that's why pre people would like to participate because they would like to bring funding because they, they are expecting a return on investment quite high. So that was, a, so Tony, you, you correct me if I'm wrong, but so that's a, a part of the answer as well. Um, and the second part to come back to what you were saying is that uh, on the blue, we are in relationship with a lot of people because we have our personal relationship, but as well, they are already our customers, so we know them. And for example, when you have a, a turnkey substation uh, tenders. There is still a big EPC you will answer to this. So there would be LNT, G, Siemens, ABB, Skipper, Schneider for medium tension. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of EPCs are contractors and Spanish as well. Uh, but that, they will do the turnkey job. But after there is a cascade of small opportunities depending on that, we will follow this big turnkey and we are in relationship with the EPC. So if there is a tender uh, you are interested in to become a subcontractor of the one who will answer to the end user, we would be more than happy to put you in relationship with the decision maker and the EPC for you to have the opportunity to present your products, your services and so on. Okay, excellent. Thank, uh, uh, thanks for that, uh, Aysan. I think uh, I have another question uh, for you, which was asking, with regard to the membership, so do you have a, a price strategy uh, depending on the size of the company? Because you showed different uh, payment, payment plan that was on the duration. But I guess if you have smaller companies uh, uh, as opposed to bigger companies, have you thought about something to accommodate those smaller company or it's something that they're going to be looking at later so that was a question uh <clears throat> yes at the very beginning is what we wanted to do that but it's complicated it's difficult that requires to check every time what's it and what happens what we realize that you have a lot of small companies of 10 peoples but actually they belong to a big group. <laughs> so it's, and that happens a lot. So it's extremely okay. difficult to make the dissociation between what is a small company and what is a small office belonging to a big company. So we did a, a same price for everybody, <clears throat> but we say it has to be accessible for everybody. So we made a very fair price. Uh, because I mean, I don't think it's a lot of money for a company who wants to have a thousand of business opportunity per day. Uh, and in the future, we will do some dissociation of pricing because we are already working to be able to make some matchmaking between, as you have seen on Deep Blue, you just put your profile in which industry you are working. <clears throat> and from the other side, we've got all the tenders and depending on the keywords we have found, it's quite easy for us to make the matchmaking and to suggest the right opportunity to the people directly and that's going to be another service and maybe it's going to be another membership <clears throat> but to answer to the question for the moment same price for everybody 
Okay, uh, uh, that, uh, that's excellent. I think at least that democratized the, uh, the yes. offer to, uh, 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 to people. No, that, um, uh, that's great. I think I had, uh, there was um, one more, one more, we might actually take uh, one or two more questions, Alexan, and then we're gonna be thinking about uh, uh, wrapping that up. So if that's, uh, if that's okay uh, with you. So, and the question for me was to find out whether, uh, that's actually for two hours, it says here, yeah, whether the private deal always uh, only applies to Africa. So let me take that uh, uh, question. Alexan, you might wanna chip in a go. So at the moment, yes, uh, all the opportunities are uh, on Africa. However, for renewables in Africa, so most of our job it's on the African continent. However, we also have some opportunities in on the uh, merge market. They are not significant. Uh, they are not huge, but it's only a small part. But uh, they they, uh, they, are, they will exist. For example, no uh, no later than today. So uh, my team uh, uh, got uh, got to. Um, Get in touch with uh, a project in and in Vietnam that sounds uh, are interesting, and as we usually do, we will review that properly first. So do some proper vetting, and once we have that, we can then uh, move ahead. So at the moment, it's um, it's uh, 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 it's Africa. So we're going to be introducing uh, emerging market, but uh, yes, so that's what we do. So now, as to whether we're going to open to Europe, I have to say, so I tend to be relatively focused into. With, uh, our, 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 with my team and the company in Africa and emerging market, that's really big enough for you, uh, for us, especially Africa, and that uh, we will see. But maybe Alexand wanna, um, so wanna, uh, um, yeah, Alexand lost you there. So I was just gonna say, yeah. So at the moment is Africa. We're gonna have some emerging markets, but that's what it's gonna be mainly. So if we're gonna have private deal for other uh, for other geographies, who knows? But I think at the right time we think about that. So have you got anything, anything else to say, Alex, about that? And then we're going to wrap up. I was kicked out of the, of the call. So I didn't, uh, I was not able to, 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 to listen to your answer. But uh, yes, uh, the focus is on Africa right now. Uh, but <clears throat> we have already one person of the team in Deep Blue who is trying to liaise with um, project developer bringing private deals. And uh, once we will have constituted uh, a consequent portfolio and that Tony will have qualified the pertinence and the relevance of the opportunity, we're going to propose more and there might be some out of Africa as well. Yes, so that, that's the thing. So one last thing that was a question that also uh, come up was asking whether the service is always uh, also applies to uh, project developer who, was, who want to use our service to find uh, partners and investment. Yes, the other way around, uh, it can also work uh, like that, definitely. So if you have a very interesting project and then uh, you don't necessarily know where to go and find the right partners, so this is something we can easily do through our network renewables in Africa to Deep Blue. And uh, if you get in touch with us, so we can talk about that, do the right, um, do the right vetting, go to the right investing process and then uh, we can tell you how we can uh, proceed with that. So that's what I was, I, I was going to say. So maybe one last word, Alexander, and uh, we will wrap up the conversation. Um, as a last word, I would say that uh, more than happy to have further discussion with some of the people attending the call. And um, my email is very easily alexandre.deepblue.com. Just drop me a line. If you want to have a dedicated demo, there is no issue. If you want me to invite your colleagues, if you want me to make some promotion for you, I would be more than happy to do that. And I was... Uh, very glad to have this very first webinar with you, Tony, and thank you again for organizing all this. Okay, that was, uh, uh, the pleasure was definitely shared and because uh, both our company are working hand in hand now and we're hoping that we're gonna bring interesting solution initiative to the, to, the, to the market. So before I release all of you, so I would like to run a quick uh, straw poll and then uh, if you can, because we're using the feedback to make sure that we can, uh, address properly uh, issue that uh, uh, are important for you. So if you don't mind just uh, completing the, uh, the survey, please. And then uh, after that, we're gonna be closing shop. So if I give you about 45 seconds to a minute to do that, and then after that, we...
Uh, where, where, where is the survey? Where the people can find the survey? Uh, normally, it's uh, it's going. So I've launched it. So can't you see that in your? No, it's not appearing for me. Okay, so that means I might have an issue then. <laughs> I can see uh, a couple of people already uh, done that. So okay, I can see uh, your slides. Yeah, if you can, that's fine. So I'll uh, I will um, I will I will look at that another time. So yeah, so I might, I might have some technical issue that deep was working. <laughs> I, might, I might borrow your clever guy to look it up for us. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so uh, I'm gonna end the poll here. So um, I suspect so it's, it's not working for everybody, but uh, the feedback we had uh, says uh, people are relatively okay. And then, okay. So I shared uh, share the results, so you can you can see. So I can see we have some more work to do because I can see a, f a fair there, no problem. So that's what we're here to do, to make sure that we can we can improve. Okay, so um, thank you very much for joining the call today. Uh, that's what I would say, and it was a pleasure to to have you all. And uh, the next uh, Weber session. Most likely going to be uh, next month, and then we'll be communicating the uh, the feedback to you uh, shortly. So, Alex, and thank you very much for sharing the um, the uh, sharing the space with me today, and thank you for all who took the time to be with us uh, this uh, this afternoon. So, have a great day, have a great end of the uh, of the week, and uh, we will speak to you again shortly. So, I'm just going to say my language in good pelo, which means thank you very much. Bye. Merci Tony. Thank you everybody.